Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. So, big day at Gaz Brothers today. We've already released the third uh, winter 2017-18 update. You can find that video right now on the homepage. And later on today, that's going to be placed on the winter updates page. There will be a written report that goes about as well, very extensive and detailed uh, written report. That'll be around 6 or 7 o'clock this evening. I'll usually be a bit late getting that up. I will get it up for you uh, later on today. Uh, this second update for today is the uh, September uh, ECMWS seasonal model interpretation. Um, so this is really exclusive uh, content. The ECMWS uh, long range model is not widely available. I'll talk you through. Uh, about the model in a moment, but it isn't a widely available model uh, at all. And uh, I've been allowed to do an interpretation of the charts that I've seen for this winter from uh, the latest update of the EC uh, seasonal model. So that's what we're going to do for this uh, second update. Um, I'm on the ECMDF uh, website uh, right now, so we'll just uh, have a look at the uh, ECMDF uh, website. This is it, uh, the forecast page of the ECMDF.int um, website. And you find the link uh, to the ECM website on the links page. Now, once you come here, what you'll find is access to uh, mainly shorter range models. But there is a long range model. It goes out to both um, 30 days and also goes out to uh, seasonal uh, time frames. And these longer range charts are not widely available. They are available if you pay a lot of money for them. They're also available if you have to be a pro uh, met working for a pro meteorological agency. But for members of the general public like you and I, we are not really uh, able to access these charts. However, a very good uh, friend of mine has allowed me to have a look at the um, latest update from the ECDS seasonal model. And whilst I can't show you the charts that I've seen directly, because they are restricted, I can show you my interpretation of those charts. And as I said, that's what we're going to do uh, right now. I did one update for this winter uh, last month. I'll just give you a quick recap on that. So this is how the 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for the winter of 2017-2018 looked when we did last month's interpretation. What we had last month uh, was quite a lot of blocking up to the north, quite a lot of high pressure to the north of the country, and then seemingly weaker pressure through um, the mid latitudes, through the Atlantic anyway, and into uh, Europe. And then higher pressure again down through southern and southeastern Europe, uh, perhaps. In some ways, very similar actually to what we saw uh, when we did these interpretations last. Uh, last winter, uh, or leading up to last winter. Um, so a little bit confused by that, how they could be uh, so similar. This was the um, mean sea level pressure anomaly as well from last month's update. This one looked a little bit more interesting because it did indicate some um, above average pressure there around Greenland and Iceland and uh, also uh, lower pressure across central parts of Europe. So that would look quite interesting because we thought that it implied we might do something like that uh, with the flow and uh, with the jet stream as well perhaps through the winter. So that's the most interesting chart that we had when we did uh, last month's update. The temperature and precipitation anomalies were quite weak, although there was no suggestion within those of a particularly cold winter, despite that mean sea level pressure anomaly. So let's have a look now and see what the ECWF is predicting for um, this month's update uh, in terms of our interpretation of the ECWF seasonal model for the winter of 2017-2018. We're going to begin with the um, 500 millibar height anomaly chart again. Uh, now this has uh, changed quite a lot from what we had last month. So we do still have some above average heights here to the north, but they are a very, very long way north now. Now. They're right over the top of the pole and they are substantially uh, weaker as well. We've also got a core area of above average height sitting across many central parts of uh, Europe. And then it looks like whilst we are below average with the heights, we have got weaker heights here 
to uh, to the north. Um, so it's a very confused picture. It's very difficult to interpret. But the overall suggestion from this would be quite a mild scenario, I think. We would be bringing in the wind generally from a westerly flow and possibly even from a southwesterly uh, type flow as well. As I say, it's quite a weak signal, but I think the EC, uh, ECM seasonal model has shifted this month uh, towards a milder winter outcome. This is the mean sea level pressure anomaly for the uh, North Atlantic and Europe um, for the winter of 2017-2018. Again, quite a mixed bag. We've got uh, below average pressure being indicated here up to the north. By the way, these have been interpreted uh, for us by our good friend James Atwood. So a big thank you to James for uh, doing these interpretations uh, for us. So we've got um, below average pressure up to the north in terms of the mean sea level pressure anomaly. Uh, it looks like we've got some ridging out in the Atlantic and also going up in towards parts of Scotland as well. I mean, otherwise, again, not a huge amount uh, to be seen. It's a very, very weak month. And this is something that I've talked about to um, my contact, that uh, it, it is a very difficult um, interpretation uh, this month because the model has uh, weakened, although it's got a month closer to winter, actually the signal overall has become very, very weak. But overall, I think we are probably bringing in the suggestion anyway of a westerly uh, jet stream, probably quite flat. And uh, you will think that's tending to go more towards the milder and more, perhaps more unsettled side of things for Northern Europe anyway, for uh, the UK and I, and we're close to this northerly displaced uh, ridge in the Atlantic. Now, the only thing to say about this is that with the pressure uh, relatively high just here, and then relatively low over here, we might at least get some cold snaps coming through, but it doesn't preclude the chance of cold snaps in that kind of scenario. But overall, you wouldn't say that's a particularly cold situation at all because there's no real high pressure up to it all. That is quite a flip on what we had last month, where you remember, I just showed you it, this was the mean sea level pressure normally from last month, where we had high pressure centering itself uh, seemingly over Greenland. We don't have that uh, this time. Actually, pressure looks quite weak up to our north. Uh, this is a temperature anomaly for uh, Europe. This is looking pretty grim if you want cold weather, I'm afraid. Uh, more or less the whole of Europe going uh, rather si significantly, substantially uh, warmer than average uh, for the winter of 2017-2018. So there's no real cold of an average temperatures anywhere, just a little bit down towards the southwestern tip of uh, Portugal, I and mean, then some up in the northern part of the Atlantic, where we've got low pressure, of course, centering. But for the bulk of Europe, it's looking warmer than average, with some really quite big anomalies to average, particularly so for Scandinavia, uh, around the UK, and also around Italy, into that central and southeast part of the Mediterranean. Virtually the whole of Europe is looking very significantly warmer than average. If you watch the CFS six months look ahead uh, that we did yesterday, you'll know that certainly for January and February anyway, the CFS uh, is seeing a very, very similar temperature anomaly uh, to this for January and February, not necessarily for the entire winter period, because it does heat the CFS a few cold snaps around December, but for January and February, it's seeing a very warm temperature anomaly to average, and the ECNDF is going for that as well uh, this month for um, the winter of 2017-2018. So a very mild winter is being predicted uh, by the ECM. Uh, and then finally... <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, we've got the uh, precipitation anomaly. And again, this is a bit of a mess. It's all looking uh, rather weak, to say the least. But I think what we can say is that more or less the northwest of Europe does look a little bit more unsettled. Uh, and then many southern and uh, eastern parts of Europe probably average, drive an average down in the far uh, southeast. But I think the rainfall looks like it's congregating particularly up to the northwest, of course, much of this across northern Europe, northern Scandinavia, to western Russia, where it is, um, we do have above average precipitation. In these areas, much of that is going to be snow, of course, even with a warmer than average temperature anomaly. 
such as we see there in the far north of Europe and far northeast of Europe, a lot of that precipitation is still going to be snow. Um, but overall, it looks like the north of Europe is a little bit wetter. The south of Europe uh, looks closer to average. And again, I have, do have to emphasize the signals are very, very weak and mixed um, for this uh, month's ECNF interpretation of uh, the seasonal ECM model um, for winter of 2017-2018. Overall, the model has shifted uh, towards a milder than an average winter, though, and a more Atlantic-driven signal as well. I suspect as we get through to next month, we'll find the signals um, starting to firm up a little bit. I don't think they'll be as weak uh, as we have for this month's update, but, of course, we will wait and see on that. So not the news that you uh, would have wanted uh, if you want a cold winter. We've got the ECDF, the CFS model, um, both going for a uh, mild, seemingly quite Atlantic driven winter uh, at the moment. We will do the first seasonal model roundup for the winter of 2017-18 um, next week, actually, a week today, last Sunday of September. So we'll get uh, several long range models together and see what those models are showing uh, for the first time for the winter. It could be that the ECM and the CFS are going to be out on a bit of a limb, and actually some of the models will be looking uh, colder than these are suggesting. We'll know in a week's time. Right, that's it then. So uh, we've done our second uh, ECM seasonal model interpretation for winter of 2017-18. Uh, now we will do the third uh, interpretation, of course, in October. Don't forget to check out the third uh, winter roundup. The video of that is on the homepage, so scamper over there right now and check it out. Uh, and also, of course, later on today, that video will be placed uh, very much on the winter updates page with an extensive written report going over everything discussed in the video as well. But at nearly 12 minutes, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.